Coach, last year you're picked fifth in the preseason in the league. You end up winning the Big Ten, you win the Big Ten Conference Tournament Championship. Obviously, this season doesn't end the way that you want in the NCAA Tournament. Mm -hmm. How much has that been talked about by this group, and how much has that maybe been used as motivation going yeah. forward? Well, we definitely talked about it afterwards. We talked about it a little bit in the summer. We had a couple of different exercises in terms of just looking at your goals, looking at how you're going to you – know, you're not going to start off – in the NCAA tournament. Like you gotta earn your way back in the NCAA tournament. Like you just, if you started and you played an NCAA tournament game to start the season, it would make a lot of sense. But you wanna fight like hell to get yourself back in the position that you were in last year. I think that's the, you know, the most important part of it. But it's also kind of having just that collective confidence. We just didn't, even though we were winning games at the end of the year, we still had some struggles. And just collectively, we just lost our confidence simply shooting the basketball. Not playing the game, but just shooting the basketball. So I think we've added more athleticism. We've added more quickness. I think that'll help us. But I think just that experience of it and the work we put in, you know, we're going to shoot the basketball a lot better. When you took a step back after the season ended, was it difficult to maybe separate how successful the season yeah. was versus yeah. the NCAA tournament loss to Philly. Yeah. I would say it's impossible Yeah, because it's the only thing you feel. You, you don't like walk around, hey, we won the Big Ten, hey, we won the Big Ten tournament. You walk around like, as a coach personally, it's like how in the hell can you have the number one efficient offense versus the top 100 in the country, but yet you can't score 60 points versus 16 seed. But yet we did the same thing before. And it's that high level of turnovers. It's We shoot a lot of threes. So it's a high volume of threes, low percentage, and that combination right there. Um, so it, it's very difficult. It's one of those things that will never leave you. Mm -hmm. You got a huge boost this offseason when Zach decided to come back to school. What was that day like for you, and how surprised were you that right. he, he did come back? Well, I think the process um, – was very healthy for us. You know, Mark Bartlestein did a great job as his agent. Um, it's something where I, when you have somebody like Mark, you can just take a step back as a coach because you know he's going to do all the, you know, the research for him. He's going to get all the intel, and everything's going to be above board. He wants what's best for Zach, but also you got to listen to the NBA people, and I, I think that's where, you know, Zach has to have the season this year to where he knocks that threshold down a little bit. Like, it's, it's unfair to him in, in a sense, but it's the way it is. And so like, you know, Zach from an improvement standpoint, you know, and Mark, you know, really mentioned this, he's not only the best player in the country, he's the most improved player in the country. So why should we take him out of that environment where he's improved so much? So I look at Zach and someone says, well, we have a better season. And I don't want to like equate it from a number standpoint, but there's no doubt he's going to have a better season. Like he's still in that improvement phase to where he's, you know, he's getting better. Well, he, he's so new to the game, right? He started playing when he was 14 years old. He's making those quantum leaps as opposed to like fine tuning his game. Where do you still think that he can make uh, make strides as a player? Well, last year where he really made strides was protecting the rim, his ball screen defense, rebounding out of his area. I think really it's not going to be like one aspect of his game. It's just going to be in his confidence. I think he's a more confident player. Um, yeah, when you travel to six different cities and pick up National Player of the Year trophies, it'll help your confidence a little bit. So I just think he believes in himself more and kind of having a little bit of that swag, I think is really going to help him. Zach certainly anchors that front court, but you've got some real depth there. You've got Trey Kaufman Wren, you've got Caleb First. You know, you look at the bodies, you have Mason Gillis as well. Um, as a coach, it's a great problem to have, but how do you start doling out these minutes yeah. because there's only so many to be played? Well, I feel comfortable with any of those guys playing alongside him. I think it just kind of comes to matchups, who's playing well at the time. Um, and then not being afraid as a coach like to stick with one of them. But it's going to affect the other two at times. And I think that's really, really hard. Um, but kudos to all three of those guys you know, for staying at Purdue. There's a lot of people running around college basketball yeah. that would have just simply thought about themselves. Because those guys, all three of them, can play more minutes when Zach's there mm -hmm. at other places. There's no doubt about that. But can they win championships? Can they put themselves in a position like we're in right now? And I don't think they can. And so, um, you know, just very fortunate to be able to have all those guys and really have the depth. Like, we have depth there, but we have depth on the wing. We have depth in our backcourt. Um, it, which, like you said, it's a good problem to have, but um, we're, we're hoping competition can sort it out. When I got to Purdue in 07, you were the youngest coach in the league, and now you are the second most tenured, only behind Tom Izzo. There you go. Is that surreal to you when, there, you, when yeah. you think about that? Yeah, very surreal. Like, I've lived on a college campus my whole life, and so I don't look at myself as, as being someone who is 
who was older. I think the game keeps you young, the position keeps you young. Um, but I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from the coaches that have come through the Big Ten. Um, it's something I do all the time. Like you'll get into your fifth, sixth conference game, and then like, you know, well, what do you think we should do? Well, let's watch Michigan State go against them. Let's watch Wisconsin go against them. Let's watch Indiana go against them. Like I've learned from all the coaches that I've competed against and it's really helped me. Where do you think you've grown the most as a coach in your time at Purdue? Uh, probably my patience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yes. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I wasn't very patient when I first started, and I, and I only kind of thought one way. And um, now, especially in the last 10, 12 years, I've been a lot more patient. I've been a lot been more open-minded to things. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to have that edge. Mm -hmm. And I think some teams that, that already have that um, is different than some other teams that maybe is a little bit more laid back and like that's what I don't want to lose this year I want to I want to be able to keep that edge mm -hmm. and, and, and keep that going but I knew you would, you would like that answer <laughs> I did I did yeah like that. two different people two different people <laughs> you played for Gene Cady he just went into the basketball hall of fame which is an incredible achievement right. when you look back at the time that you played for him mm -hmm. what is something that you've taken from him and now used as a coach yourself yeah Probably just his approach and how like like he did a great job of prepping and preparing and, and getting you ready, um, but he didn't give in to anything. Like, and that's something that I've always done. Like, don't give in to anything. I don't care who they have. You know, we can still win this game. We can still put ourselves in this position. But um, I, I, I thought he was half crazy, you know, kind of like your old man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I thought like, like what in the hell are we doing? You know, about a quarter of the time, I'm like, and then all of a sudden I got into coaching, and I'm like, ah, the like I the get, Mattis. there's a method to the madness. And that's something for me that, I, that I've that i been different in that sense, and I especially think that with today's player, is explain the why. Mm -hmm. Don't give it like, hey, because I said so type, right. you know, philosophy. <laughs> like explain the why of you're doing it, and I've always tried to do that. I've always tried to explain, okay, here's why we're doing it. And then I've also tried to explain, but here's the downside to it. And, and so, like, keep it in perspective, because I would always go back and, I, I, I you know, I thought I knew a lot. I, I, did, I really didn't. And, and, and coaching will do that to you. Like, coaching will, like, bring things full circle. Um, but, no, he was great. Like, he, he was fabulous. And, but that approach that he had was probably the number one thing. When you were playing for him, did you ever think that you'd end up saying some of the same sayings that he said to you? No. No way. But you did, right? But, but I do. <laughs> not, 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 I did, I do. So, but for him, like that was like, he was very authentic. He was himself. Mm -hmm. And I always respected that. And I've always tried to, no matter if I'm in the office and players around or not, I, I act the same way in front of them that I do when they're not around. You know, it's well known that Zach played hockey and baseball growing up. How, how have you maybe coached some of that out of him and brought the best out of him as a basketball player? Yeah. You know, the thing that I, I looked at when we recruited him um, was I wanted to watch him pitch because I wanted to see. Well, you're a baseball guy. I'm so. a baseball guy. I wanted to see like, a, you know, hey, is, is he dragging his knee like Tom Seaver? Like, you know, it's <laughs> like, how in the heck is he bending? And then when I saw him pitch in his body and the way, you know, he was bending as he was pitching, like I thought he would be like, you know, I don't know, like a mannequin. Like I'm just like, how in the world can he do this? And I'm like, man, if he can bend that way. And then when I watched him play a couple times live and he had good hands, he was really good in workouts when I watched him. And then when he played pickup, they never threw it to him. Uh, and so it was- He has a talented player. So yeah, too. really hard to evaluate when, no one, when he doesn't touch the <laughs> basketball. No, no, no question about that. He admits he likes to play angry. So do you have any, I guess, strategy or philosophy of maybe getting him into that mindset? Uh, not really. Um, you know, I'm more of like from an offensive standpoint of if that's where the ball's going all the time, you better know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So like from an execution standpoint, we run a lot of different things and it really starts with how he's getting guarded if it's coming to him. Um, so like you can get angry, but like, you know, you, you still got to be able to do your job, but like his ability to rebound, his ability to run, he has got that competitive spirit. And a lot of times those guys lose it a lot, um, because they get ref differently, mm -hmm. you know, especially in high school, you go see a big kid in high school. I mean, it's a flip of a coin if he's going to have three fouls here in the right. first five, six minutes of the game. So they get ref differently. And he kind of didn't go through that where he was a marked guy. Like he, he really didn't go through that process and, and that anger and that frustration. He had a lot of it when he started just because he kind of, you know, wasn't in control of his body. You know, we were going to the monitor 
couple times a game for about six, seven games. And then he just slowly but surely, he just figured it out. He's, you know, Brandon Brantley's done a great job with him, one of our assistants, and uh, they watch a lot of film, and, you know, we just get things figured out. Now it's not as much of us telling him, now it's more of a conversation. And that's what you want from players. You want cerebral players, you want guys with experience, and now you can talk your way through things about what's best. What's the one tradition that you've built into the program at Purdue that, that you are most proud of or, or like the most? The efficiency on offense. Like that's been our, that's kind of been our baby in terms of, you know, being able to run stuff, being able to run stuff for our personnel. When you played, we ran a lot more motion. We ran less sets and that was okay. We didn't have, Juwan Johnson was a really good player, but he could move around and be a good player. He could hurt you from a lot of different spots. When you have those guys like A.J. Hammonds and Isaac Haas and, you know, and Zach, where you anchor him, Caleb Swanigan, and you want him on that block, now you have to have the efficiency of offense to be able to get him that, the basketball. And so that is where we have grown the most, in my, in my opinion. That's what we have to continue to do. And in, in, in our sport, the, you know, offense and defense gets separated a lot, but they're really connected. So if you just constantly constantly keep scoring and keep getting a foul. You just keep setting your defense. And even yeah. when you miss shots and you take good shots, you're still setting your defense. So that has really helped us. Anytime we've been really good and efficient on offense, that's what was scary two years ago, how bad we were on defense. We were a tenth of a point from being the best offensive sure. team in the country. And you're like, whoa, what if we were average? <laughs> like we would have been a really bad defensive team. And so we made a huge jump last year and got into the top 25 there. We were actually, we were 14th offensively, I think was, was the stat, or um, I, no, 12th offensively um, versus everybody. But versus top 100, we were number one, which makes no sense at all. Like you, you should be, you know, you should be great against bad teams. Right. <laughs> we were great against great teams, and then we, we had more struggles versus lesser teams, which is a little bit puzzling. I was hoping you'd say win a road game, rent a movie, next road game. <laughs> there you go. You like that. That used to be our, our rule. That was the rule. That was we rule. were on the road, you got to run a movie yeah. next time. Yeah.